Hi. Hope you all are doing well. Today we will be talking about uh, personal session in measurement and instrumentation. Uh, tell me what we measure when we fly. Do we measure uh, displacement or do we measure distance? So let me tell you our today's topic is displacement measurement and we'll be talking about different methods of the displacement measurement with the instruments. This is under the semester 5 IC measurement in industries. I am a course instructor Mohsen Pandya. And first of all we will see what is the difference between displacement and distance as we started with. So let us see here one figure. Uh, here you see like uh, starting from point A to B to C to D we have to travel in 3 minutes. Let us take an example of this uh, skier. So the distance and displacement covered by the skier during these 3 minutes uh, from A to B, B to C and C to D we have to measure. So A to B is 40 plus 100 plus 40 that is 180 meters. Then B to C that is 140 further and then C to D that is again 100 meter. So this is for distance covered by this here is total 140 plus 100 plus 40 and then again 140 again 100 so that makes 420 meters in 3 minutes. Now, what is the displacement actually? So difference between displacement and distance. Distance is actually we we, we go through a particular path and we, we measure the uh, uh, in meters or centimeters or kilometers. And displacement is straight away from starting point to the end point. So starting point here is A and end point is here B. So that is net is 40 plus 100 that is 1. 40 meters. So here distance covered in 3 minutes is 420 meters and displacement is straight away between A to B that is 40 plus 100 that is 140. So by this uh, we will be talking about displacement measurement in normally uh, we, we, uh, people uh, always miss to differentiate between distance and displacement. Okay. So displacement measurement can be done by uh, various uh, uh, methods and sensors that uh, I listed here. There is pneumatic transducers, optical transducers, electrical transducers, ultrasonic transducers, and magnetostatic transducers. Uh, then we will be having digital displacements and proximity sensors. So today we will be talking about pneumatic transducers and uh, this uh, transducer will be coming in the upcoming session. And here we will be starting with the flapper nozzle assembly that we studied in the previous semester 4 under uh, principle of measurement sciences. So pneumatic transducers here talk about the pressure. Pressure will be transferred in terms of displacement. So how does it work? Let us once again revise the uh, concept of flapper nozzle where we used to convert current to the pressure. Okay. So here you see the diagram where uh, supply pressure is given uh, at 20 PSA standard uh, supply and it is uh, passed from uh, restriction that we say uh, orifice will be there and then that it, it, it will have two ways. The one will be going to the nozzle and another will be going to the signal pressure that you can read 3 to 15 PSA standard. Now, supply pressure, then nozzle, then your flapper. Now, flapper is a movable uh, plate which is pivoted at one point and balanced with the spring. And here, a gap you can see between flapper plate and the nozzle of the pressure supply. Okay. And Ampere we have supplied here is 4 to 20 mA that will make an electromagnet over here. 
So what is going to happen now? As this magnet, uh, let us go back a little bit. Uh, this magnet enters the iron piece placed on the flapper. The gap between flapper and your nose nozzle will reduce. So ultimately, whatever pressure we are supplying from uh, the 20 psi supply line, the maximum pressure will go to the as the signal pressure. Now, if the gap is higher, like if we if we reduce the amount of current, okay, if we reduce the amount of current, the gap will be larger and more amount of pressure will be released from that gap and here signal pressure will be reduced. So according to the gap, if, if gap is smaller, then the signal pressure will be higher. If gap is larger, signal pressure will be lower. So that gap is due to the electromagnetic activity and that will represent the amount of current in terms of signal pressure. Now, what if, what if we change the electromagnet with the help of a physical moment? Here you see we have applied for 220 milliampere range, which is a practical range uh, where we, we work in the industry and continuous supply of 20 psi we are making sure it, is, it will be, uh, it will be set, uh, reaching to the line. And in case electromagnetic electromagnets are activated. Now, what I am telling you is if output uh, this output pressure will be proportional to input current. So the question is, what if we use physical movement instead of electromagnetic action? So this electromagnet uh, which is shown by the uh, red uh, arrow that will be displaced by a physical movement of the object. Now let us see uh, the uh, little bit revised uh, edition with this. So here what we are going to do is we will be translating the displacement into pressure. Previously what we did, we did current trans translated to the pressure that is I to P converter. Now uh, the, the diagram is little bit, I mean 90 degree uh, modified. Here you see flapper plate. You can see the x distance between the nozzle and the flapper. Now flapper is pivoted at one place and one end is connected with the object. Okay. Rest of the things are same. PS is your standard supply line, fixed restriction that is orifice, and whatever pressure is released at the flapper end. Rest of the pressure, that output pressure will be measured in the pressure chamber, measurement chamber, we said. So let us have uh, some terminologies, uh, assuming uh, the incompressible flow and equal discharge coefficient. I hope you all remember this uh, from the previous semester study. And diameter, orifice diameter, nozzle diameter is given, fluid density, and pressure in uh, measurement chamber that is. PO output pressure and known pressure supply that was 20 psi standard in our case. Okay, and uh, we uh, understand that ambient temperature will be zero. Now gap between end of the main vessel and the flapper plate that is X. Okay, uh, that is written here. Uh, now with these parameters we will go ahead. So once again the diagram is here. Now, what happens? A flow of uh, lower pressure is uh, supplied through the restriction, and uh, the X is the gap between flapper and the nozzle. So, the body whose displacement is to be measured is connected with the flapper plate. So, the motion of flapper plate will change the value of x x between x between the flapper and the nozzle so if x is smaller this gap is smaller so less amount of pressure will be 
liberating from that point. Hence, PO in the pressure measure measurement chamber that will be higher. And if the X is larger, more amount of pressure will be released, and there will be less value of more value of PO. So that will actually uh, will be indicating the uh, amount of X. And X is decided by the motion of the object, movement of the object. Now what we have to do, we will measure this uh, pressure PO and you can calibrate in terms of displacement. So uh, we, we had seen this equation, what I am going to see here once again in the previous semester, that flow through orifice, I again repeat, we assume incompressible flow with the coefficient C D and flow through nozzle. Flow through orifice and flow through nozzle, these four equations we, we need to remember where T ambient temperature is zero. So now what will happen if ambient temperature is zero, then both the flow will remain same. So we, we say Q1 is equal to Q2 and if you simplify the equation, uh, you will get this ratio P O upon P S, which is in terms of C orifice diameter, nozzle diameter and your displacement X. And uh, again, we recall the sensitivity, sensitivity uh, of this uh, transducer that is in terms of the output pressure to the displacement. Here you say it is uh, differentiation of output pressure uh, and with respect to the your displacement between the left bulb uh, nozzle that X we define. So, uh, if you simplify the equation, we, we need not to go uh, in the depth and we remember simply that xi becomes 0.14 b o square upon pm that will be the maximum sensitivity, sensitivity point for this our transmission. Uh, let us examine the characteristic, how uh, does it work. So on the one axis we have, uh, x axis we have uh, displacement that is x and on the uh, y axis we have a PO output pressure that is uh, between 3 to 15 that we measure and we supply in the 20 psi standard that is indicated here and the sensitivity will be the slope of this curve. So here you see uh, the slope is almost linear between 3 to 15 psi and practically because of that only we are using uh, between this uh, pressure when to measure like displacement will be converted to pressure and pressure will be measured and again that secondary measurement will be calibrated in terms of displacement. So when xi is sufficiently large that uh, PO by PS becomes almost constant. So there is always a range, limited range between which we can work to measure the displacement and make it de definitely this will be uh, utilized for small amount of uh, displacement to be measured. And uh, you please remember this data, PO by PS is linear between 0 0.15 to 0 0.75 that is the range 3 to 15 PSI pressure range. Otherwise, if uh, beyond uh, that uh, uh, large value of the xi, PO by PS will become constant and will not be able to uh, sense the uh, displacement. Here, uh, I am showing you one uh, small application, practical application, where a uh, supply line is uh, created, uh, where you see the nozzle with the red indicator and the green uh, is the release pressure from the orifice and air supply, I get 20 psi and again you see the displacement uh, sensor is connected with the uh, flapper and flapper is connected with the piezo tube and that will vibrate. So that vibrations will create the uh, uh, respective you know, uh, voltage signals and ultimately we say the secondary measurement we are doing here. And the entire uh, circuitry is created that will be converted to some analog signals and then uh, DAC is employed and the entire closed loop system is created for the measurement of the uh, a very small displacement in terms of X. So this was uh, paper nozzle assembly here 
and uh, the one of the uh, important topic as per the GTU studies concern from the chapter displacement measure. And in next forthcoming session, we will be talking about the optical transducers. We will be having variety of optical transducers, and we will be uh, will be uh, uh, talking about the uh, how we uh, use the fundamentals of light transmission to measure the displacement at the various methods. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, please uh, solve the questions given in the description of this video and study well. Thank you.